Welcome to the Fortress of Sound. I'm Carl. Today we're going to be talking about a new VST plugin that was featured in the standalone NPC Live. I got an NPC Live about a month ago to replace my aging and failing and Sonic ASR 88, which I love, and I was writing a bunch of awesome dungeon synth stuff with it. Um, it sounds great, and it kept on failing and stopping and and decided I need to upgrade to something more modern, and here we are. NPC Live can do a lot of the poly polyphonic sampling and the stuff I love that the ASR could do. But on top of all that, it has some pretty awesome VSTs, and this one just got added. Now, the hype is pretty awesome. It can do a bunch of different wavetables and other things like that, but I want to focus on how it's actually an FM synth hidden inside. Now, it doesn't actually show you any of this. There's no algorithms that can be changed. So it's essentially a two-operator FM synth, and in the MPC system, you could sample it and resample it and mangle it beyond belief. So here we are. You can see that we cannot mix any kind of oscillators in here. But we do get a ratio for the carrier and the modulator. Now, this is important because this is basically how it works in the old DX7 days. When you're at a ratio of one, you're getting a straight sine wave. All right, but well, you can hear it. When you get different ratios, like 1.5, get that classic crunchy Sega Genesis kind of golden axe thing. Sounds pretty cool. Alright, now we have mod level as well. Now this is seems to be tied to the mod decay. So you can see here that's sort of the envelope for the carrier. Or the modulator, sorry. And that's sort of the envelope amount, you can see. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is the mod decay seems to be tied to velocity. So, the lighter you press, the longer decay is. The quicker, snap. So it's, it's a bit of a fiddly thing. You can't, unless you disable velocity on your keyboard or whatever. Or you could just have it hit full level on the pads. And tune is sort of like um, a, a minor, like a fine tune between the ratios for that stuff. Get you more metallic zones. So let's, so let's just mess around. Then let's just start getting some, laying some tracks out. See the tune, the fine tune is really get that nice kind of chorusy thing really low down there. All right, so let's add an arpeggio kind of sound, like a more plucky FM sound. All right, that sounds pretty cool. So one of the things you should also be aware of is, although this might seem a little bit limited in terms of the FM, adjustability and you also have stuff like cutoff sort of the stuff tacked onto the back of the FM sound so you can see it sounds pretty awesome it's definitely an FM synth inside there and, uh, they could simply just 
unlock a lot of the stuff that's hidden behind the scenes here if they wanted to. Let's clear out some of this rift. Let's get a little old on here. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you could do on those old, those older ones like the four operator Yamaha FM synths, like the DX9, the DX21, stuff like that. I mean, lately bass, all kinds of classic bass lines are written with very simple FM stuff. So, there you have it. That's You can do a lot more. I'm not touching on all the features. Obviously, effects and other things like that are sort of an additional thing you're probably already aware of, and they're very similar in the rest of the system. But hype synth, hype FM synth, using the FM in it, starting point. I mean, that's an FM synth right there. You can get there. Have fun. It's going to sound awesome. See ya. Here's a quick little demo of just all FM sounds created with the hype synth. So let's start out, just let's bust out a hype synth with the FM initialized patch. Just the ratio a little bit. Now this can this can get somewhere close to a DX7. I don't claim this thing can actually be a DX7 because the envelope for the operators are, is severely nerfed. I don't really know why. It's like that. That's just how they decided to do it. But what this is doing with while using three hype FMs together is pretty much just the six operator sound, which is what the DX7 was. What's also great is you can actually adjust the envelopes per operator, so it gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of tone. So you can sort of get these transients with one of the operators, sort of like an attack transient, and the other one's sort of like a held tone. 
Another one's maybe a pad or a slow building type of tone. Obviously, this is just, I'm really quickly just busting this out. I'm just scratching the surface on all the options you have here. But also, what's unique is now that it's essentially three different layers, three different programs on tracks, you adjust volumes, you can automate differently. It's mostly about like perspective. It's like, yeah, this thing can do so many things, but what if you just hold shift and activate three layers and treat it as a single tone. That's where you kind of get into this weird area of like, well, it's, it doesn't seem to have a limitation on tracks, so I might as well just use the tracks as their own instrument if I wanted to. So let's sample that thing. Now that we have three layers, say we want to save some CPU power or something like that, just sample it. Bam. Simple. Throw it on a key group layer. Trim it up. This could also have been auto sampled, but I don't often use that because it just creates a ton of samples if you're not careful, which sometimes don't even matter. And I really like lo fi, grungy, garbage sample sounds, so whatever. That's fine with me. Use one for the whole range. But there you go, you get sort of. you get the idea. It's. An, very easy and quick. It's sort of like just looking at it differently. There you have it. Thank you for watching Fortress of Sound. I'm Carl. Remember to like and subscribe to keep this channel going. Always have fun and make cool sounds. See you later.